Every Harry Potter book has a unique approach to the Christmas season, which I find really great. They do something different for the holidays every year, and each one has its own story. So to celebrate the season as a very enthusiastic Harry Potter fan, I wanted to take you back and look at what was going on with Harry during each of the seven Christmases we spent with him. Spoilers ahead if you haven't read the books. So for the first book, Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone, Harry spent the holidays at Hogwarts this year with Ron, Hermione went home, and I believe Percy, Fred, and George were there as well. This is the year that they all got Weasley sweaters, Harry learned what a Weasley sweater was, and he also got the invisibility cloak which his father had left for him. Which of course he ended up using to sneak around Hogwarts at night, and he ended up discovering the mirror of Erised, which wasn't such a good thing for an 11 year old boy to find. The book says that they had a meal of turkey sandwiches, crumpets, trifle, and Christmas cake. In year two, during Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry, Ron, and Hermione stayed at Hogwarts during the holiday season. This year, they spent their time off from school brewing the polyjuice potion in Myrtle's bathroom, which Hermione finished on Christmas Day. And as we know, it ended up with her turning partially into a cat and spending the rest of her holidays in the hospital wing. Christmas year three during Prisoner of Azkaban is when Harry receives the firebolt in the mail from an unknown sender. Hermione assumes that it's Sirius Black, which she is correct, but at this time they think he's a murderer, and so Hermione ends up reporting the gift to McGonagall. In this book, we also get to see Hogsmeade at Christmas for the first time, and it's described as looking like a Christmas card. There are holly wreaths on the doors and strings of enchanted candles hanging in the trees. Sounds amazing. <laughs> Goblet of Fire, the fourth book. Actually, most of the student body ends up staying at the school this year for the holidays because the Yule Ball happens on Christmas Day, which I thought was really exciting. We end up getting to see all of this drama that isn't life-threatening, and I thought that that was pretty fun. They're all pairing off, and they're learning how to dance, and Neville ends up coming back super late after everyone else has gone to bed, which nobody expected. I love that little detail. <laughs> I thought that year five was an especially poignant Christmas. This is the one where they end up going to St. Mungo's Hospital to see Arthur Weasley, who had been hurt by Nagini. And this is where we find out the heartbreaking truth about what happened to Neville's parents. So we get kind of a look into his family life for the first time. Order of the Phoenix is a really dark book, and I feel like the way that J.K. Rowling chose to handle the holidays was very, I don't know, kind of realistic. The Christmas season can be sad for a lot of people for a lot of reasons, and I'm really glad that she had one year where that was the case. They spend the rest of the holidays at 12 Grimald Place, and it's the first we see where Harry doesn't spend it at Hogwarts, which he is okay with because Umbridge is the worst. <laughs> but even though Harry is surrounded by friends and chosen family, he ends up sulking and staying by himself for a lot of the holiday because he is feeling really guilty about what happened to Arthur, and he thinks that it's his fault. And now for the sixth year, Harry spends Christmas during Half-Blood Prince at the Burrow with the Weasleys. In this one, Molly Weasley is disappointed because her son Percy won't be joining them for the holidays, and what do you know, he shows up anyway, but with Rufus Scrimgeour, the Minister of Magic, and it turns out that they only came because they heard that Harry would be there and they wanted to try and persuade him to cooperate with the Ministry. Which, thank goodness he says no. <laughs> Notable gifts this year include Ron's My Sweetheart necklace from Lavender Brown, and of course, Harry's parcel full of maggots from the wonderful Creature the House Elf, <laughs> which Harry says he actually prefers to Ron's necklace. <laughs> and for the final one, in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Harry and Hermione are on the run, and they end up where else but Godric's Hollow, which is where Harry's childhood home is, and he ends up seeing the graveyard where his parents are buried. They get attacked by, for me, the most terrifying thing Thing in any of the Harry Potter books, uh, Nagini the snake hidden inside of the dead skin suit of Bathilda Bagshot, reanimated by Lord Voldemort. I did not like this part. <laughs> then Ron comes back, surprise, and destroys the locket Horcrux. And those are all seven Christmases that appear in the Harry Potter series. Since I've reread the books a bunch of times, I like going back and reminding myself of some of the moments that maybe don't always stick out in my memory. I like that J.K. Rowling always included the holidays in one way or another, and we got some pretty great stories around their time off from school. Which was your favorite year for Christmas in Harry Potter, and why? For me, it's between the Yule Ball in year four, which is just so fun, and the visit to St. Mungo's in year five, because it's so heartbreaking. I hope that you're having a magical holiday season. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.